As we emerge from the shadow of the COVID pandemic, we face an unprecedented triple threat, global recession, a rapidly degrading environment, and enduring and widening inequalities. Our policymakers have choices to make. They can continue with the decades old orthodoxies that dominate social, political and economic policy, knowing full well that rather than create shared prosperity, these orthodoxies have contributed to growing division and inequality between and within communities in the UK. They could tinker at the edges with superficial patchwork reforms, hoping that this time something will finally trickle down and the reforms will be able to address the rapidly declining quality of life and growing insecurity so many are experiencing, all the while ignoring the continued failure to engage with the communities whose prosperity and welfare the reforms aim to improve. Or they can take inspiration from radical thinkers like Seaborn Roundtree, William Beveridge and Beatrice Webb, who revolutionised policy making and prosperity in the wake of the last global catastrophe of this magnitude, World War II. Certainly, we face an unprecedented threat, but we also have unparalleled opportunity to reimagine a future in which all of our people live fulfilling lives and to create a nation in which all citizens share in our collective prosperity. Seizing this opportunity requires us to be bold, to be courageous, to be imaginative. It's not enough simply to redefine how we measure growth or to seek consensus on the giant evils of the 21st century, or to devolve power further from the center in the hope it will bridge the growing democratic deficit. Rebuilding prosperity requires a clear understanding of what will deliver livelihood security, not an ill-fitting measure of national growth. Rebuilding prosperity cannot be wholly determined by policymakers in Whitehall. Policy must evolve from the communities whose prosperity and welfare it aims to improve. And rebuilding prosperity requires a new safety net shaped to the lived experiences of the 21st century rather than the early 20th. Rebuilding prosperity for the 21st century requires an entirely new conversation for change, and I invite you to be part of it.